Uh, Matt's from Sydney. She's Wolf from Brisbane. Yeah, John, just waiting for John to come through there. Excellent. We've got a few more people joining. So let's uh, jump into it and, and talk through what we're going to go through today. So again, I so said welcome. My name is Mick Cullen. I'm one of the helicopter instructors here at Aeropower uh, Flight School and I've uh, been here since 2009 and love uh, teaching aviation and giving people a chance to, to come along and, and have a fantastic uh, go at what we uh, get to do here. And part of that is today looking at uh, some of the, the weather sides of things. So thanks for taking the time out to, to come along and, and learn about this. So the aim of the next sort of 20 minutes or so is to go through how to access aerodrome weather forecast, understand the components of the forecast, and know where to reference decode information uh, for later on. So aviation weather forecast, there are quite a different uh, types of them. So we'll go through. Yeah. The first one is the R4, which is the area forecast. This will cover a larger area. There's more of a generic forecast uh, rather than for each individual airfield. So it covers, you know, uh, area 40 here goes from West New South Wales border in Queensland uh, up towards Rockhampton. The second one is a, a TAF. This is our terminal area forecast, and this is the focus of, of what we've got on today. Next one is the trend type forecast, so the TTF. And we won't cover it today, but it's very much like a, a TAF, but it is a more for the larger airfields and has a three-hour validity period. And these are generally considered fairly accurate in terms of forecasting because it's you know, updated quite regularly. Next one is a, a meta, and this is actually not so much a forecast as a, a statement of the, the weather conditions at that particular point in time. So there's no actual validity period on this. It's just a, this is a weather at this particular time when we've uh, put this uh, meta out. Okay, and last one here is SIGMET. So normally you'll see a SIGMET when there's been a, a pretty dramatic change in the weather uh, and normally a deterioration. So it's something that people know that the, uh, the weather has changed below particular minimums or for that, uh, that aerodrome or that it's been quite a large change in the weather. But the one we're going to focus today on is, is a TAF, but there's lots of similarities in the terms of you know, how the, the information is presented for all, all the different types of forecasts. So an aerodrome forecast or a, a TAF, the definition for it is a statement of the meteorological conditions expected for a specified period in the airspace within five nautical miles of the aerodrome reference point. Now, at each particular licensed aerodrome, there'll be a, a point on the ground, and that's what they use for survey work and saying you know, where that airport is. And that's what they call the aerodrome reference point. There's different categories of airfields in Australia. So you can imagine, you know, Brisbane or Sydney International Airport is going to be very, very different to a, a small country strip. And the amount of resources that go into providing uh, weather forecasts will you know, it makes sense that they're different as well. They're going to put a lot more time and effort and money into updating the weather and providing weather forecasts for somewhere like Brisbane, uh, where people are coming in and out of international flights, than you would for a small country strip. So depending on the size of the airdrome, depends on how frequently the weather forecasts are released and also how long they're valid for. So how much effort's gone into forecasting well in advance what the weather's going to be. So you can see there, there's a category. So category A is an international, and a TAF at a international airport is issued every six hours, and they're valid for 24 to, to 30 hours. As you work down the scale there, we issue less frequently and for shorter periods. And basically you're thinking if you're flying from LA in the US to across to Australia, it could be you know, a 16 or 18 hour flight. And so when you get the weather, you're also gonna be updating as you fly across the Pacific. But when you launch out of there, you're going to have a, a weather forecast, which is valid for the length of your flight. Uh, and typically, if we're doing smaller aerodromes, then it doesn't need to be as valid for as long. And that's the, basically the thought there. We're just you know, using our resources where we need to put them most frequently in terms of the, the weather forecasters. To find out what uh, category an aerodrome is, we look at the, the URSA, so the En Route uh, Supplement Australia. And you see there's a section here that talks about meteorological information for Bundaberg 
you can see here that Bundaberg is a Category B aerodrome, so is issued every six hours for Bundaberg. What we're going to go through is a, a typical TAF, uh, and this here is for Brisbane uh, from last night. And if you've seen this for the very first time, it does look you know, quite imposing. It's a lot of numbers and text, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. But what we're going to do today is basically walk through each segment of the forecast and break down what it means so you can come back and look at tasks like this and we've got several examples coming up so you can actually extract the information from that and it doesn't look uh, quite so confronting. That's what we'll go through now. So the first section, well, obviously, before we get to marked in red there, is, is the TAF. That gives us an idea of what type of forecast is. So in this case, it's a terminal area forecast, the TAF. And this one is for Brisbane. So each TAF will start with a four-letter designator. And these are international aviation aerodrome codes. So airfields in Australia start with a Y. And in this case, it's B for, for Brisbane, because it's in the Brisbane FIR, or the Brisbane Flight Information Region. And then the BN is short for Brisbane. We'll look at some of examples of those. So Archfield, again, starts with a Y because it's in Australia. B, because it's uh, attached to the Brisbane uh, control zone or control area. And AF for Archfield. And Redcliffe, where we are today, is Y red. Yeah, again, you can find these airfield codes in the en route supplement. So again, using the, the example of Bundaberg, on the right-hand side, you can see that the airfield code there for Bundaberg is YBUD. So each airfield has a four designated code, and that appears as a second item in the TAF to let you know which airfield that relates to. The second section here is the date and time that the forecast was created. These were always in Zulu, so this reference uh, Greenwich Mean Time or Universal uh, Time. So this would be zero o'clock in uh, Greenwich in England, means it's 10 o'clock here in Australia. So this was issued on the 23rd of February and it's at 0528 hours. And, and, and that's basically it. It's just the time that the, the actual forecast was, was issued in Zulu time. So you then need to convert that. For us, it's easy here on the East Coast. We just had 10 hours here in Brisbane to convert that to local time. The next section is our validity period. So this is the, the period that this forecast is valid for. Uh, so this is when we can actually use the forecast to determine what we're going to do for our flight. Uh, and if it goes outside that area, then we need to get a, another forecast, which is, again, valid for our flight. In this case, again, it spans a day. So it starts on the 23rd at 0600 hours and goes through to the 24th at 1200 hours. And again, because it's Brisbane Airport, this one here is valid for the, the longer period of 30 hours. Moving on to the next section, this is the, the wind. So wind is represented in basically five numbers. So the first three numbers are the, the direction the wind is coming from. So from 360 degrees in a full circle, in this case, it's 110. So that's going to be coming from the east, slightly from the south. So if you think of 090, is directly to the east. This is just a little bit further around. And the last two numbers there is the wind strength, so 14 knots. So in this case, uh, the wind is 110 degrees. And the big thing here is it's reference true north. Uh, so when we convert this to using for our flight plans in the aircraft, we can either convert it to magnetic, but when we read it here on the weather forecast, it's reference true north. And 14 knots is the, the strength of the wind. Next section is our visibility. So this will tell us in number of metres, how far we can expect to see at that airfield on this uh, forecast. So it could be 5,000, it could be 8,000 metres. In this case, as soon as it gets above 10,000 metres, so above 10 k's, it will just see that represented as 9999. So that could be 10 k's, it could be 20 k's, but essentially as soon as you get above 10 k's, visibility is written as 9999. So that's our visibility that we expect at the aerodrome. Okay, cloud. We'll talk a little bit about this. There's a couple of different sections here. So it's going to give us the amount of cloud and also the height. So if we look at the types of cloud first. So cloud amount used to be represented in eights. So we talk about one octa, 
or two octaves would indicate that was one or two eighths of the sky uh, covered. Now we talk about few, scattered, and broken, and, and overcast, sorry, the typo there on the slide. So few is between one to two eighths of the sky covered with cloud, scattered between the three and four eighths, broken, so when we're starting to get over half the, the sky covered now, and obviously overcast, which would be OVC, um, where the word few is, that means that the, the entire sky is covered in clouds at, at that layer. So you could have layers above, uh, and it's just referring to that particular height that we're talking about. If you see SKC, it just means that the sky clear. The, the digits after it are the height of the cloud in, in hundreds of feet. So in this case, it's scattered at 040, so it's scattered at 4,000 feet. All right, if you look at this photo, this was taken a couple of weeks ago over Brobby Island near our training area, looking towards Morton Island in the background there. And if you just want to have a look at that photo, when you're ready, if you want to have a, a guess at either the number of eights of the sky or if you think it's few or scattered or broken, then drop that in the in the question box. All right, so just from what you're looking at it, just have a, a guess if you reckon, would you, would you say half the sky is covered? Would you say it's less? Would you say it's more? Yep, so I've got a few people saying few, a few people saying broken. Between four and six. So yeah, look, I'd probably say it's scattered. So it's probably just slightly less than, than half the sky covered if you think of the space between the clouds there. So that's the idea. That's how they basically uh, represent and measure uh, how much cloud cover there is at that particular height and level. All right, a couple of other variations you may see is something like this. So this indicates the SH is for showers of rain. So the, the minus sign in front means light. So in this case, we say light showers of rain. Okay, few cloud at 2,500 and a scattered layer of cloud at 4,500. So now we're saying we're stacking cloud on top of each other. So few, so one to two eighths at 2,500 and sitting above that at four and a half, about half the sky is covered. So for us on the ground looking straight up, we then really have to sort of layer those. And so we would say that it is then broken, you know, if you combine those two layers together. The other things you might see is CB, meaning there's cumulonimbus. So that's our uh, dark sort of storm clouds. And then you've got your TCU, which is towering cumulus. So that's the, the big fluffy white clouds that have started to really get some vertical development and uh, getting some height to them, which can then turn into uh, thunderstorms. And obviously that huge amount of vertical development means there's large amounts of updraft and large amounts of wind moving up and down around that particular area. So that's what I want to note on the forecast to let uh, pilots know that there could be uh, weather effects there, especially updrafts and downdrafts near those large clouds. All right, Cav OK is another section you might see. And it's really like a, an abbreviation of a couple of different things. And there's a few finer points to it, but very broadly, it basically means that the visibility is going to be 10 k's or greater. There's no nil significant cloud in the aerodrome area and nil significant weather. So there's not uh, rain or hail or, or fog or anything coming through. So it's a nice way of abbreviating a few different things. And generally when we see cab OK, it's thumbs up that it's going to be good weather. Okay, question is about being recorded. So, look, I have hit the recording button for this and we'll just see how the recording comes out, whether that'll be available or not. Okay, so that's our, our forecast. And this next section, again, it looks pretty scary when you see lots of front lines and, and generally, you know, rule of thumb is if there's more than five of these different lines and you, you find a different day to go flying, it will break it down. So generally, we need to start off the period and say what the weather's going to be. But obviously over, and you know, in this case, a 30-hour um, forecast period, the wind and the cloud and things like that is probably going to change over that period. So the forecasters have a, a section or a tool they can use a, a from period. So the first part will say this is the, the weather and then they can say but, but from this particular point forward we expect the weather to be this. So in this case we'll break it down. So from on the 23rd 0, 0900 the wind will change to 140 degrees true. At 11 knots, and the cloud, or sorry, visibility is still at 9,000, and cloud there has changed as well. So it's basically forecasting at that particular time, the weather will then change to this, 
and then it's got another two from periods after that. So that gives the forecaster's ability to break up a, a larger forecast into smaller, more accurate uh, segments. You'll see it's done in a couple of different ways in, that, in this particular section. So from means a, a change in the weather at that particular time to the new weather that they, they state. Becoming works pretty much the same, but generally means more of a, a gradual change. So they may say, you know, the wind or, you know, the, the clouds becoming scattered. And, and it means it's, it's, like it's more a, a gradual change than, than a from. Into and tempo basically give the forecasters an ability to say that the weather's going to deteriorate for a, a short period of time and then return to what the, the forecast was on the actual TAF. So you might have a, a reasonably good day, but they're expecting showers to come through. And so for inter, for periods of up to 30 minutes, the weather may decrease to what they say. So they may say that the weather up to 30 minutes will decrease to scattered at or broken at 1,000 and showers of rain. And that shouldn't stick around for more than 30 minutes at a particular time. But in a, a particular period, the weather could deteriorate as showers come through. A tempo means that the weather could deteriorate up to 60 minutes in time. So that has implications then if we need to carry holding fuel uh, for our arrival and things like that. But generally means an intermittent or a temporary variation in the weather and then it will, it will return to what the rest of the forecast says. And we apply a 30 minute buffer period on this when we're planning our flight. So, and it's on the worst side. So inters and tempos will apply a 30 minutes either side and that just gives a bit of leeway in case the, the forecast isn't as accurate as it is on the particular day of what the actual conditions are. And the same with the from period. If the weather's going to deteriorate from 0 to 100 hours, then we're going to put a buffer on that on the front end of it and assume that it's going to take effect 30 minutes early. And if the weather's getting better, so if it's a bad weather and then from a certain point the weather's going to get better, so I get better, we then add a 30-minute buffer on the, the far side of that. So we give ourselves another 30 minutes for the weather to improve from when the forecast says that it will improve. Okay, we also have a remarks section. So the R and K is for remarks. And again, this is another a place where the forecasters can write in, in plain language if they need to, just explain what is going on or something out of the ordinary. Uh, and they can talk about turbulence in there as well. Uh, and it just gives them a section where they can put some of those extra marks so they don't fit in with the rest of the, the format. The line down the bottom now, we start getting to our temperatures and our pressures for the forecast period. Excuse me. So in this case, the temperature of the line reads T for temperature, 27, 25, 24, and 23. And these work basically along the slides here. So the very first temperature is the temperature when the uh, period or the TAF uh, first starts its validity and comes into effect. And then each three hours later after that, so 3, 6, and 9 is the temperature that they're forecasting those particular times. Now, if you want to pick a time in between, so in this case, if we want to pick a, a time approximately an hour and a half after the, the forecast has been started, or the forecast period started, then what we do is simply just draw a, a linear line between the, the, the um, forecast temperatures. So halfway between the first one and the second one, we say it's 26 degrees, and you can see it's falling off there. So you can sort of interpret a little bit between the actual temperatures itself. Now, when we first put this TAF up, I remember this, this TAF for Brisbane actually goes for 30 hours. So we only actually have temperature information for the first nine hours. Okay, with the remarks again, just looking at that. So we've got the remarks, and, and again, this goes from that particular date and time. It's saying there's moderate turbulence there, and it's giving it a time where that will lift from. So again, it's just another place in the TAF where people can, well, the uh, weather forecasters can provide information like that. It also works for rainfall as well. You may see RF and the two uh, sections of numbers there. So the first number is the rain in the last 10 minutes when the uh, forecast or the observation was made. And then the second one there is since nine o'clock local time that day. The air pressure works in a really, really similar way. So the Q here is for Q and H. So we call it questionable nil height. And this is a, a setting that aircraft can use, so we're all flying off the same reference uh, datum in terms of our altitude. And it works the same way as the temperature in terms of the, the time periods. 
So the first number there is the the pressure at the airfield when the forecast first becomes valid, and then for each three hours after that. You'll see a bunch of weather codes. So some of these we've already looked at, and I'll show you where you can look these up. But again, it's sort of written as a weather codes rather than in full. So you can see here that showers is SH, thunderstorms is TS. Okay, there's a bunch more of these here as well. So dust storms, DS, dust, DU. And these are all in ARP Gen, and I'll give you a reference to that later on. But it's not in common to have to come back and look at some of these because you don't see them that often on the east coast of Australia. So let's have a, let you have a chance to look through those. Okay, is there any questions so far on, on those elements? We'll start going through some, some more examples. So just use the, the question box there or the chat box. If you've got anything you want me to cover before we move on. All right, okay, we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Quick question for you guys then. Okay, this is a representation here of the, the wind from our, our weather forecast from our, our TAF. Can you tell me what that means? So if you see the wind represented as these figures, what would you read from that? Again, once you've got the answer, just put that in the, in the question box. Yep, so John, yeah, you went from zero, six, zero degrees, that's correct, at 10 knots. Yeah, Wolf, that's correct. And yeah, Matt, that's, Matt's got it in there, that's actually reference true north. That's the big takeaway when you read it in a, in a forecast, the, the wind direction is in degrees from true north. So that's right, it's from the, the northeast, zero, six, zero, at 10 knots. Excellent. Let's go through some more examples. So again, these are all taken from yesterday. So this is Carnarvon in Western Australia. And I'll give you a chance to have a read of that and then we'll, we'll break it down again. Okay, so follow along at, at home and, and see if you can get the, the same figures out of this. So the TAF is for, sorry, the, this type of forecast is a TAF. It's the first section there. YCAR, again, is the designator for Carnarvon. And you can look that up in... In the URSA, on route uh, Southland Australia, or to be honest, I was put it into Google, uh, typed in uh, TAF uh, YCAR, and it comes back with the name of the, the aerodrome. Okay, the first line of numbers there is the the time that the forecast was created. So in this case, the 23rd, 0246 Zulu, was when the forecast was issued, and the validity period is from the 23rd at 0400 hours to the 23rd at 1200 hours. The wind is from 220 magnetic, or sorry, 220 degrees true at 14 knots. And we see that CAV OK again. So if you remember, CAV OK basically means that there's uh, no cloud in the local area, there's no significant weather, and we're going to have greater than 10k visibility. Yep, Kevin's quite happily giving me the reference there. We'll get that later, but those weather uh, decodes are all in uh, ARP Gen. 3.5. Okay, so remarks, so new remarks on this one. We've got our temperatures and our uh, pressures again there. So you can see the temperature is falling, and there's only the three numbers on this one. And, and again, the pressure there is falling, again, there's only three, because again, the validity of this, of this forecast is really for a, a shorter period. Okay, moving on, so this is Darwin's one from yesterday. Now, again, have a read through. And try and do the decode yourself, and then I'll read through it shortly. Our brace is asking what the, the, the Z stands for, or Zulu. So that's what we call uh, Zulu time, which is essentially Greenwich Mean Time, or Universal, uh, or UTC. So uh, again, aviation is a, a global industry. So when someone is in LA launching for Australia, and they get the Australian weather, they need to know what time was issued and be able to convert that to their local time and for us to be able to convert it to our local time. So pretty much all the times we reference in aviation are reference Zulu time uh, and then you convert from that to your local time zone. 
So here in Australia at the moment, or sorry, I should say Brisbane, with our daylight savings, we are a plus 10. And then depending on what your time zone is, is how much you would add or subtract to Zulu time to find your local time. So that's a good question. Exactly, and someone else pointing out amend, AMD. Um, so we've got TAF, AMD is short for amended. So that's drawing attention to the fact that this is a TAF that's been reissued in the period, probably because the weather has changed from what they forecast, and they've amended it and put out a new TAF, which is going to be more accurate. So let's work our way through it. So again, TAF, terminal area forecast, the type of forecast. AMD for amended. YPDN is the designator for Darwin. So in this case, Y for Australia. P, because it comes under the, the Perth area control. And DN for Darwin. The time was issued, so 23rd, like 05220. I'm just going to move boxes here so I can see the screen. And the validity period, again, from the 23rd at 0600 to the 24th at 1200. Wind, 290, so from the west at 10 knots. Visibility will be 10Ks or greater, and cloud is few at 3,000 feet. Now there's a front period. So from 1,100 hours on the 23rd, the wind's going to swing slightly further around to the south, so 240 at 5 knots, and cab OK. So that few cloud at 3,000 feet will have started to dissipate. Go okay, next line down, we haven't introduced probability before, so let's talk about it now. So here we're saying there's a probability of about 30% that there'll be a, a tempo period. So what they're doing is giving themselves a bit of leeway there and saying the weather's going to deteriorate up to periods of 60 minutes, which is the, the tempo. So for up to periods of 60 minutes, the weather could deteriorate between 0, 0,300 hours and 0, 0,900 hours, where it's essentially saying you could have thunderstorms coming through. So the wind would be variable at 20 knots gusting to 35. So you can think about it, it's pretty actually hard to have a variable wind at, at 20 knots. So they're really not sure as the storms come across the airfield, the wind could swing around. They can't predict exactly where it's going to be, but it's obviously quite a strong wind to have as a, a variable wind. So G is a gusting up to 35 knots. So steady wind of 20 and peaking up to 35 knots as the thunderstorms come through. Visibility is the next line at 1,000. So the, weather, the visibility can drop in the heavy showers down to a thousand meters and the TSRA is thunderstorms and rain and broken at 1,000 feet scattered at 2,000 with CB so cumulonimbus so essentially saying between that period uh, that they're estimating there'll be times where after 60 minutes where thunderstorms come through the weather drops down to a thousand meters visibility a thousand feet broken cloud and there's a probability of a 30 percent of that happening so that's what those lines are we go remarks, empty in this case, and again we have our temperatures and we have our pressures uh, for those periods, so each three hours from when it gets issued. So your question there from Wolf about the P in front of the Darwin, so you have nothing to do with the RAF base, it's just purely because it sort of comes underneath the, the Perth area of control. So you'll find areas will have an M in front for Melbourne or a B in front for, for B for, for Brisbane, uh, or S will tie them into to Sydney. Okay, Townsville. Again, it's got a bunch of from periods there. It'll give you a moment to have a read through and then we'll go through it. All right, so working away from the start, we'll work through and uh, again, try and pick up things as we go through. So TAF, the terminal area forecast, it's the same forecast we've been looking at. There's an AMD again, so amended forecast, and YBTL, so in case, again, Y for Australia, B for Brisbane, and TL for Townsville. So it falls within the Brisbane area of uh, influence or control for the weather. Okay, the time it was issued was the 23rd at 0745 Zulu, and the validity of this weather forecast, so when we can use it to actually basing our flights on is from the 23rd at 0, 0800 hours and again these are Zulu time to the 24th at 0, 0600 hours. Wind 100 degrees true 14 knots we've got better than 10 k's visibility and we've got two layers of cloud here we've got scattered at 2500 and scattered at 5000 so they're stacked on top of each other. And then we've got these from periods so again the weather expected from 0, 0900 hours 
The wind is going to be 12, oh, 120 degrees at 11 knots. But we've got the showers of rain coming through, so it's still 10 k's visibility, but light showers of rain, and now scattered cloud at 2,200, and a broken layer now at 4,000. So you can see the clouds start to thicken up and come down a little bit, and we've got showers of rain coming through. Similarly, for the next two front periods, I won't read those out, but you can see the weather from those particular times is changing in terms of the wind or the, the cloud amount and height. Then we come down to where the inter is. So again, inter means that the weather for up to periods of 30 minutes can deteriorate uh, for, this, for this amount. So it's got a period there between 1100 hours and 0, 600 hours. We expect the weather to deteriorate for up to 30 minutes, down to 3 k's visibility, showers of rain, and broken at 1200 feet. So there'll be basically lower clouds and showers of rain coming through the area during that time period. Remarks, section is empty there, and then we're into again our temperatures and our Q&Hs for, for Townsville for that forecast period. All right, references and things we've done today. So basically you'll find the explanation of each of those segments of the TAF in the decode table for the different types of uh, weather in ALP Gen, so Aeronautical Information Publications uh, General 3.5. Also, if you Google any of these on the internet and just Google how to decode a TAF, uh, you'll find similar little charts and flow charts there to help you break down and explain what each section of the, the forecast is. And again, of course, your local flying school. I'll drop in and, and ask, and, and people are more than happy to have a chat there. All right, so depending on where you're coming from for this thing in today, people come from a, a whole range of backgrounds. So it's just, I guess, thinking about where you're particularly at to. So you might be in a, a cubicle job or in an office somewhere and looking for a, a career change. Uh, you could be a, an aviation nut and just uh, love finding everything about aviation or perhaps you're just curious and, and sticking your head in to have a look at uh, what goes on. So for whatever reason you're here, you know, the obvious question is where you want to go with it and if you do want to go for a, a flight and get more involved, please do talk to us and come out and have a look around the hangar out here at Redcliffe. In terms of, of getting flying, and going along, the, the first flight lesson is essentially lesson one, and you go lesson two, lesson three, uh, but we call it a, a trial instructional flight. It involves a pre-flight briefing, a, a walk around of the aircraft, where we go through some of the safety considerations, what we look for each day when we check the aircraft over. And you actually go up for a 45 minute flight where you get to go hands on the controls, and the instructor will uh, talk you through and show you what each of the different controls do, and, and basically the, the basics of getting the helicopter along. And at the end of it, we get to have a photo and you can walk out of here with a, a nice uh, achievement certificate saying you've, you've done your first helicopter lesson and flown a helicopter. But it takes about two hours from, from start to finish. That's normally $379 at uh, the moment. But if you mention this webinar or if you book online through our website, you'll be able to save uh, 10%. The phone number is there. But again, pretty easiest way is just go through the website. I'll put the website address up there at the moment. So look, if you do have any questions of anything we've covered there or just in general, uh, now's a good chance to, to shoot them there and, and I'm sure other people will benefit from your questions too, so please don't be shy. Uh, and as you send those through, I'll just leave it there slide. This is what we normally finish our, our briefings with here uh, inside or when we do our, our flight briefings here at Redcliffe. It's the, the slide to say, hey, let's go flying and do the, uh, the lots of the fun stuff. So there's a website address. There's several videos and resources there you can check out. And uh, I'll hang around now for a, a couple of minutes and answer any questions you might have.